Tablets have come a really long way from the early days of the iPad, and now, with today's powerful chips, compact batteries, and great screen technology, the line between laptop and tablet is really getting blurred. There are laptops with removable keyboards and tablets with attachable keyboards. There's even laptops that are just two tablets stuck together where one acts as a digital keyboard. So that got me wondering, can you actually interchange the two? Like, can I actually replace my laptop with a tablet? I wanted to figure this out, so I set out on a mission. And for the past seven days, I've actually replaced my laptop with a tablet to see how things went. There were things that went really well that I didn't expect, and some things that I just plain couldn't get done. And of course, I still had to do all of my daily tasks, like managing emails, online shopping, budgeting, uh, PDF signing, like all the normal stuff I would do. But I had to do this on a tablet. So rewind a week when I was getting started with this. I wanted to find the best tablet for this experiment. And I know there's a lot of tablets out there. The iPad Pro is a pretty obvious option because you have the same chip as the, as the MacBooks. So you've got the M2 on the iPad Pro. The apps are generally more optimized than Android tablets, but I didn't choose the iPad. I didn't choose the iPad Pro because I wanted one feature that only Samsung actually offered. So I actually ended up going with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra. Now I'm not saying it's a better tablet than the iPad, but for this experiment, it made more sense because of this, this one feature. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but kind of just a quick overview of this tablet. It's a really large display with really thin bezels. So it was a nice tablet to use. You also have the fastest Android chip out there, which is the Snapdragon Gen 2 for Samsung. It's extremely slim, great screen to body ratio. It only weighs about one and a half pounds. I'll put that in kilograms for my metric friends out there. And really the one big feature, the reason I chose this instead of the iPad, was because I had something called Samsung DeX, which to me feels a little bit like a cheat code in this experiment, where you actually have a desktop-like interface that your tablet is able to, to use. So you can press a little button, and instead of having a regular Android tablet, it switches over to this kind of desktop mode, which I thought was great. So I can use it as a tablet when I want a tablet, and when I want to have like multiple windows and move things and resize things, I just turn on Samsung DeX. So this was the tablet for the job. But in the beginning, I honestly had a pretty rough start. It really took some time to, to figure out what apps were really optimized and which ones worked well. So for example, I'm used to using Brave or Chrome, they're really similar. And I found out here, I was actually, it didn't, like things weren't really quite optimized, whereas Samsung internet was a lot more ideal, something that I wasn't used to using on most devices. But on here, just making that little switch improved a lot. And also when you're on websites, you wanna make sure you're going into desktop mode. So you don't have a skinny mobile view on a really wide, large screen. So after some time, I, I found alternate apps that made things work and, and really were optimized for this tablet. In addition, the hotkeys do work. So con uh, control C, control Z, like all the normal hotkeys, they worked. Some of them were like a little bit different. So it took a beat to learn the differences, but for the most part, they were one-to-one -one with Windows. You can also use DeX on here with another monitor, which I was very excited about. So instead of being limited to only one display, I wanted to plug in my other monitors, but I kind of came to a small issue here. I wanted to use this on two monitors, but you can't actually do that with DeX. Instead, you can have one monitor, which is DeX in, in your tablet, either off or in tablet mode, but you can never have two screens showing DeX which was okay. Having one screen show DeX and the other one show a tablet was still easy for multitasking. It kind of felt like having two screens even though they were weirdly both running a different interface. And then the other learning curve was the ports. This obviously doesn't have a lot of ports. You have USB type C and uh, you can technically insert an SD card, a micro SD card, like if you have it from a camera, but you need a tool to do so. You have to eject a little SIM tray to do that. And once again, if you're doing wired DeX, no HDMI, no headphone jack, no USB-A, like, you couldn't do, you couldn't plug things in here. But there was a solution to this, something I used in the past and I dug it up and sure enough, this thing was an absolute game changer. This was the Anchor 551, their little hub that also doubles as a stand. So I can set this on there really in any orientation I want and I can plug in. So this is now charging all the time. I don't have to worry about the battery and it gives me a bunch of ports. It gives me SD card, micro SD, USB type A and of course HDMI so I could plug in to a monitor, which again, was a total game changer for me. And from here, things really started to pick up. It felt more like a laptop, but honestly, even better in some ways. I felt like I was 
really starting to get into the swing of using this tablet as my everyday laptop. So, so for one, the cameras on the rear were so useful, not just for scanning documents, but also if you're gonna like explain something to somebody, you could take a picture and just like draw on that picture, whether that's like interior design or landscaping or an engineering design, that was so useful. You also have a flash on there, so low light wasn't an issue either. And tying into that kind of drawing thing right there, you have an S Pen. This pen is really accurate, has really low latency, and just felt like a, a natural writing experience. So drawing on things was great, but also I found that I was doing a lot more handwriting. And for some reason for me, like when I write things down by hand, I just tend to remember them more. And so no laptop pen in my experience comes even remotely close to the S Pen, or for that matter, the Apple Pencil. But something that laptops totally do have, but it's not nearly to this level, are the webcams. This has two webcams on it, two front-facing cameras, not webcams necessarily, you can use them for anything you want, but this is great for video calls, because one, they're both able to shoot in 4K, which is already better than basically any laptop on the market, and two, you have the option to do either a standard lens or an ultra-wide lens. And some of these might seem obvious, but once you start using a tablet, like you realize there are some things that laptops have been doing for so long and just getting away with that, that really need to be improved. So another one is the quicker startup. With this, it's almost instant. As soon as you turn it on, you can sign in. It's just like, it's like your phone. You take your phone out of your pocket. You don't wait for it, a little spinning wheel as Windows signs in. You just sign right in. You sign in with your fingerprint. And this is the same way. You have an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, which is great for unlocking the device, but also for unlocking a lot of other stuff, different apps, different password managers, all types of things that you can have locked on here and just unlock with your fingerprint. With that, you're getting a lot of the same smooth and intuitive gestures you have on a phone because this ultimately is running Android. It's not better than Windows when it comes to mouse navigation. Buttons are, are bigger and even in dex mode, like it just feels like a watered down Windows slash Linux, like it's not, it's not quite the same. And so, like I said, once I really kind of figured things out and got into a good workflow, I got a lot done until I ran into a few issues, a few different apps that didn't work or just weird little quirks that maybe you wouldn't expect. So for one, I have a wired printer. The drivers just didn't work with this. I couldn't print from this tablet. Maybe I'm a weird person and like everyone else has wireless printers, in which case it probably would work. But for me, printing, wired printer, no good. Secondly, I was, <laughs> Like, it, it would be nice to have 5G. That's kind of one of the big wins of having a tablet is you can have, like, cellular data on there, but you can't actually do that on the Tab S9 Ultra or the Tab S9. You can only weirdly do it on the middle one, the S9 Plus. Additionally, DeX is great, but many of the apps are, are not optimized. Samsung does this thing where they force apps to be wide, so if you go on, like, Twitter slash X, uh, and you open it to full screen, like it'll make it full screen, but things are just kind of weirdly stretched out. Pictures get like too tall for the screen. Of course, you can use mobile apps, which is a big benefit. So you can get things like Snapchat and Instagram and TikTok. And so, but there are some apps that you just can't get on here. Like you can't use them at all. That would work on a laptop or on a phone. So for example, if you message with Signal, you just, you can't use it. It just doesn't work. You can't have that on a tablet. And obviously the huge one, especially for someone like me, who is like making videos all the time is I can't do, I can't use some of the big workhorse apps like Adobe Premiere Pro. I can't use Creo. I can't use a lot of those like very niche and, and like work specific apps because obviously they're heavy lifting apps. They're meant to be run on a big machine, but they're just not even available on tablets. So those were kind of the big issues that I ran into, but kind of, Moving into other corners of, of, of my life of where I was using this, one of them is on the go. Like laptops are gonna be great because they're mobile, of course, right? But this has even more mobility, which you kind of would expect, but they have things that you don't you might not even think about. So one, this has GPS. So if you're using this to like navigate, if you're driving somewhere, not only can you use it as a laptop, but you could like actually navigate with Google Maps, which was super useful. This also has a pretty solid battery life. And naturally, tablets don't have fans in them. So while that may throttle the performance a little bit, at least you won't be in like a video call with somebody in a meeting and all of a sudden your laptop gets really loud and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, like my laptop's so loud. That'll never happen with this. And I would say this is actually more durable than most laptops out there. So for one, it has Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the display. Uh, obviously it's meant to be out, so it's going to be more durable than most laptops. And a huge one, 
This is IP68 water resistant. So you can drop this in the water like two or three meters deep, I think for 30 minutes, and uh, you should still be good. I'm not saying you should do that, but that's a huge win compared to a lot of laptops. And something I tried doing, didn't have a lot of success with, but if you have like a machine at home, like a, a bigger desktop, for example, and you need to run Adobe Premiere Pro or something like that, while you're traveling, you could always do a remote desktop as long as you have really fast internet that you can make that happen. Not having a trackpad just seemed a little weird. Even though I, I, I hated the trackpads before, it's a trade-off. It's definitely a trade-off. You're gonna wanna get a mouse if you actually plan on using this, especially if you have a desk. A big positive is when you're not using this, you know, laptops and, and desktops have screensavers, which is, which is great and all, but this has something called daily board. So if you have this on a dock or if you just have this plugged in somewhere, like on my anchor thing, for example, when I'm not using it, I can turn on daily board, which in my opinion is a better version of a screensaver. It can show you like the weather, the time, photos, whatever. So after a pretty eventful week of working through these benefits and drawbacks and figuring out who should actually be using a tablet instead of a laptop, I think I have a pretty good answer. But there was one last question I, I really needed an answer to before I could come to a final conclusion. And that was, would it be better to get a tablet and use it as a laptop or get a laptop that kind of acts as a tablet and use that as a tablet? And by this, I mean, the Lenovo Yoga 9i. This thing is basically, like it's a laptop, it has two displays that fold together, so it looks a lot like a, like two tablets stuck together, but it's running Windows. So it's a laptop first, tablet second, but very, very close second. Whereas this is definitely tablet first, laptop second, and again, it does a good job here as well. But I think with this, you have to figure out which one you're going to do more of, because the operating system, even though they're both very capable, the operating system makes all the difference in the world. So DeX feels like a more like a Linux operating system, but with more limitations than most. Like it's a watered down Windows 11 kind of. Like you're limited to just one external display and some of the more niche apps out there that you would need to use, like I said, like Adobe Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Creo, like they're not gonna be, you're not gonna be doing that on here. Whereas on the Lenovo Yoga, you're gonna be able to do all of those like traditional laptop desktop applications because it is Windows 11, but then the tablet-y stuff, like if you wanna use Snapchat, if you want that rear camera, you're not gonna be able to do that. So a lot of those benefits that I talked about with the tablet, you don't actually get with the Lenovo Yoga, I think it comes down to this. If you mostly just browse the web, review PDFs, take handwritten notes, work on common programs like Google Docs, Excel, PowerPoint, Gmail, whatever, then this is really ideal. It checks all the boxes, it does everything you'll need it to do, but if you need heavy lifting or high output productivity, it's not really gonna be able to do that. It's a capable device, but the software is a limitation. So that's my experience. Leave a comment and let me know if you've ever tried this and what tablets need to do to actually replace laptops. Like, do they need to partition the drive and run Android and Windows or maybe like a Chromebook or some other operating system? Let me know. I want. I, I really wanna know what you guys think. Thanks for watching the video this long since that probably means you enjoyed it, hopefully. I recommend watching this video next. Also, if you haven't already, please do click that subscribe button and I'll see you over there.